What's going on, America? This is Kevin in Kevin's Corner. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to make sense out of nonsense. You know what doesn't make sense is how someone who is in our country and has been caught five times for illegal immigration and has seven felonies can shoot someone whether it was purposefully or accidentally kill that person and be found not guilty of all charges. Now, what would motivate a jury to find someone who committed that type of crime, not guilty? Could it be that the agenda of the left and the liberal views of California and San Francisco overrode the evidence the common sense of the jury? Could it be that this issue wasn't just about Kate Steinle's death, but it was more so a political statement to kick back against the crackdown on illegal immigration? Because if the man was found guilty, it would further solidify and justify the whole push to crack down on illegal immigration, which... It's crazy to me how a, a portion of Americans cannot see why we need to tighten up our borders. And they have been a victim of manipulation throughout the years by the Democrats and by the liberal party and by the liberal media and by this whole push for inclusion and this whole push for diversity. Um, they've been brainwashed to believe that just because we want to have a sovereign border, a sovereign country that can keep people who shouldn't come into the country out of the country. That must mean we're anti-immigration. That must mean we are racist and we don't like Mexicans, which could not be further from the truth. The bottom line, if I was a Mexican American who came across the border illegally, first of all, you have to understand, I have forfe I forfeited my rights right then when I broke the law to come over here. But secondly, if I was an immigrant here in America and I was Mexican and I went through the proper channels and process and I'm held accountable to the law of American citizens and our, our justice system and our constitution, and yet I see people circumventing the path that I went through. I had to wait X amount of years I went through the right channels. I filled out all the annoying paperwork, all of that stuff. Finally made it to America, only to find out that I could have circumvented all of that by just jumping across the border, maybe commit four or five crimes and still not be sent home because it is more important to look tolerant, to look like we're inclusive for the Democrats and the liberal agenda than it is for the American public safety. And that's what it comes down to. You cannot tell me that just because this man said, I didn't know that it was a gun inside of the shirt and it accidentally went off and killed someone that he shouldn't be held accountable. I own quite a few guns with all types of triggers, the hairpin trigger, the hard pull, the half cock, all of that stuff. And I've never felt as if I was to simply pick one of those guns up it would just randomly shoot off. But let's just say it did. Say I'm in my house and I'm cleaning my gun and it goes off, shoots through the window, cross the, the, the yard, hit my neighbor and kill my neighbor. Do you think that they're going to say, oh, well, Kev, you know, that was an accident. No problem. Get on out of here. Just don't let it happen again. No, I still would be held accountable if nothing more involuntary manslaughter, something. But this man got acquitted for almost everything except for one of the strangest accusations and charges, which was possession of a, a, a weapon. And I'm going, but yet the man said that he didn't know it was a weapon inside of the shirt. So I heard one commentator say, if that was the case, then how can you charge him for possession of a weapon when the whole defense was, I didn't know it was a weapon inside of there. And to pick a gun up and it's inside of a shirt, you mean to tell me that you just grabbed a shirt with something heavy in it and didn't feel what's in it? Because just to pick the shirt up, 
your finger have to go inside of the keyhole, the hole, to pull the trigger, the trigger hole. You're telling me you just pick the shirt up and pow, gun goes off. His story changes multiple times. And regardless of how he said it happened, whether it be an accident or not, he still needs to be held accountable for that lady's death. Now, I can't even really blame that man. You know who I blame? San Francisco. I blame the liberal agenda. I blame the liberal party. I blame the Democrats in major cities who feel that it is more important to stack the deck with illegal immigrants that if they were to show amnesty or tolerance or lenience towards them would equate to votes. They did the same thing to black people. They're trying to get every group of minorities to overwhelm the, the majority of Americans here legally. They're saying, you know what? Let's tell the African-Americans they've been oppressed for years. We'll get that vote. Let's make sure we got government assistance for a large amount of them. And let's keep telling them that the other party is racist and hate them. Then for the Mexicans, let's keep letting them come on across the border because as they get here and the population grows, you got the blacks, you got the Mexicans, you got a couple other minority groups who want to focus on and we get them to the point where we just emphasize to them, you just make it here, we'll work with you. You just make it over here to America and we'll find a way to keep you here. We'll go lenient on you when it comes to immigration laws. We'll find a path to citizenship, but you keep voting for us, though. Not only are the Democrats benefiting off of this, but you also got to look at big business where it's, hey, Democrats, you go nice and easy on these immigration laws. Maybe you'll get some kickbacks and some donations from us for the simple fact it puts money in our pocket when we can simply cut our labor costs by bringing in illegals who unfortunately is working for wages just above slavery, just above free. So they can at least say, well, we did pay them, even though it's peanuts. And it further puts the burden on legal <laughs> Mexicans, legal immigrants, and the rest of the population when it comes to social programs. And the Democrats don't care about those things. Big business don't care about those things. And what's strange is there are a lot of Mexicans that came here the right way that are against illegal immigration because they go, you know what? Why? Why even go through the process? Why have laws on the books if you're not going to follow them? And it's sad because the guy who was the defendant for this man had the nerve to take a shot at President Trump and also Mike Pence. Um, talking about that they have their own legal issues. That's not the route to go. The route to go is just say, we won and that's it. But you're going to bring some real heat to yourself because there are a large portion of a portion of Americans who see this as nothing more than a political stunt by letting this man off the hook so that it won't cause more fuel to be thrown on the fire of cracking down on illegal immigration. So when I say that this type of behavior is permitted and kind of winked at by the left, the reason I say that is because let's be real. We're America, most powerful country on the planet. You're telling me that we cannot stop people from coming across our border. Think about it like this. If all of the people coming across the border were Arabs, radical Muslims, they'd be shot. We will find a way to secure our borders. You don't see people from South Korea running over into North Korea and just being able to stay, giving amnesty, talking about this is a, a refugee city. We won't follow the laws of Kim Un and, and deal with you according to the law. They don't go over into Japan. Uh, they don't go over into China. They don't they don't do these things in other countries because guess what? Those countries are sovereign nations. But yet for us, we somehow have in, we've in, we've become enablers. We basically encourage illegal immigration long as it benefits us, though. But soon as a whole bunch of immigrants start coming over here and this is how you will know the real motive uh, behind illegal immigration. 
If all of the Mexicans that were coming illegally, and I want to stress this for my Mexican brothers and sisters, I am not talking about legal immigration. I'm talking about illegal immigration. If all of the illegal immigrants that came over here start demanding high wages, if they all start saying, you know what? All of the Americans are getting $15, $20 an hour. We want that too. We're going to unionize. We're going to come together and say, pay us the exact same amount that you would pay some American. Big businesses would definitely start lobbying against <laughs> illegal immigration. They'd be going, man, send them back over there. It ain't worth it to us anymore. Secondly, <clears throat> if all of the illegal immigrants that come over here and we said, okay, let's give them all amnesty. Let's go ahead and let them all stay. And they all decided to start voting Republican. Guess what would happen? All those liberals that say this isn't fair and Donald Trump's a racist and he hates all Mexicans, they would immediately start saying, hold up, we got to plug the cork. We got to stop this illegal immigration because it starts messing with their policies. It starts messing with their ability to stay in power. It starts messing with their votes. It messes up all of that stuff. So what they really are up to, the true agenda for illegal immigration is not because we want inclusion, even though they try to make us think that. Inclusion would get shut out if all of the people coming declared that they were coming and they were conservative and they were going to be voting Republican. All of these liberal courts, all of these Democrats that's trying to hide under the cloak of compassion for the families and people are just trying to escape bad situations and come over here as, as, as a refugee. And, and all of the soft terms that they use, they don't use illegal immigrants. It's undocumented. You know, that kind of softens the blow. It, it, it kind of makes Americans go, well, it's not about illegal versus legal. It's about they just they just don't have the right paperwork. If that's the case, why is Michael uh, Flynn in trouble right now? I mean, he, he didn't fill out his paperwork, okay, it, it, to, to say he was a foreign um, diplomat or whatever he was doing. But they said he didn't fill out the paperwork, okay? So my point is, it should be the same across the board. But what do we do? We wink at our own laws and we adjust them to fit or accommodate our political agenda. And unfortunately, because of that, a young lady died with no justice. And it burns me up because you're going to have liberal TV stations talking about the law was, you know, we even though it's a sad situation, you know, justice have been been uh, spoken and we need to honor the justice system. We need to honor the law. The law let the man go free. Let's honor garbage, because if the law was followed, the man wouldn't have been here. It's called cause and effect. And that is why I say San Francisco at the end of the day, is responsible for Kate Steinle's death. The liberal agenda is responsible for Kate Steinle's death. Sanctuary cities across America, not just San Francisco, are probably going to be responsible for even more people's death. And a lot of people try to argue, well, you know, it, it, it's really a small portion of illegal immigrants to come here that commit crimes. And look at the large portion of American citizens that commit crimes. So what are you saying? You're telling me that just because it's a small portion of illegal immigrants that commit crime, that should justify illegal immigration. That sounds absolutely foolish. Secondly, American citizens that commit crimes are dealt with under our constitutional laws because they are citizens of the United States. They're held accountable to our laws. But people who are here that are undocumented and illegally, we don't even have the same type of background information on them. Um, they weren't born here. We don't know their, their past, whether they were criminals over in Mexico. We don't know what it is. We just know they're here now and we just go, we just trust you're a good person. So should we just say, well, let's go ahead and add to the crime. Not only should our, will our legal American citizens be committing crime, but let's go ahead and welcome in 
a, a portion of illegal people coming to commit crimes as well, which makes their crime double. I came here illegally and then I'm committing crime. And I'm not talking about, yeah, um, I got a speeding ticket. This man had multiple felony charges and should have been out of the city, should have been taken back and made sure that he couldn't get back into the country. But they didn't do it because it was more important for them in San Francisco to protect their immigration policies and their liberal agenda than to protect the citizens of San Francisco. And that is why San Francisco is responsible, not just the man who pulled the trigger because it's cause and effect. If they would have followed the law, that man would have never been here in the United States in the first place. So don't give me the the justice system has spoken. The man was found not guilty. Let him go. If the justice system had spoken, the man wouldn't have been here to commit the crime. And unfortunately, politics being involved in this whole anti-Trump push and agenda, they want to do anything they can to throw mud in the face of Trump. And all of the people who voted for his agenda to crack down on illegal immigration. And they knew that if this man was found guilty, it would further justify the need to crack down on illegal immigration. And this is a slap in the face to her family. It's a slap in the face to the Constitution. It's a slap in the face to the laws. It's a slap in the face to law abiding citizens in the United States. It's a slap in the face to legal Mexicans and legal immigrants to come here the proper way. Um, it's a slap in the face to our society and it further divides our country. California and any other liberal state in America that for whatever reason decide we are not going to follow federal laws. We're going to go on a solo mission. If that is the case, if you want to go ahead and put all of your citizens at risk for a political agenda, just, you know, California is talking about, well, we want to break off from America, from America. At some point, I, I feel like just saying, you know what? Go. Let's just push California right on off and, and let it float out and be its own little island and little country. Because right now it appears that many cities or states in the United States that are so liberal that they have defied federal law. That's what they're doing. It's basically saying we are now our own little country. People don't realize this is the start of stuff like civil wars. When you start saying, you know what? I know the federal law, but because I don't like the president, we're going to defy that. And we got enough people that have been manipulated and brainwashed as citizens that are going to feel like we're justified in doing it because they don't know the law. They don't know our hidden agenda. They don't know what we're really trying to do. They don't know that we're motivated by votes. They don't know that we're motivated by um, cheap labor. They think we're motivated by justice. They think we're motivated by fairness. They think we're motivated by political correctness. They think we are motivated by conclu uh, uh, conclusion, inclusion. That's what they think we're motivated by. They don't know our really hidden agenda that in maybe 15, 20 years, when the minority population super sees the minority popu uh, majority population now, 15, 20 years, we're going to be sitting pretty. We're going to sit back and not be able to win off of policy, not be able to win off of anything of substance, with the exception of we have a automatic voting population based on minorities and us appearing to be the white hats for them, supporting their agenda, listening to them, you know, coddling them, bending the laws for them, making it long as y'all just keep voting for us. We will work with you. That's what killed Kate Steinle. You know, so, yes, even though the Mexican gentleman, he might have pulled the trigger, but that trigger was pulled a long time ago when he was caught multiple times and not turned over to the deportation police and just let go. So good job, San Francisco and the rest of the liberal party who's supporting amnesty and illegal immigration. Good job. And for those Mexicans out there who's doing it the right way, 
you know, I feel sorry for you guys that y'all have to unfortunately look at a large portion of people breaking the law and getting the same benefits that you're getting. It's not fair. It's not American. And it got to stop. It's horrible what happened. So usually I'm a little more jovial when making a video, but this is such a serious situation and a topic that it's even hard to make light of it. It's, make, it's hard to even have fun talking about this because it just kind of pains me to know that the justice system is so slippery. It's so just corrupt based off of really, does this benefit me or not? And if it benefits our agenda, we've been the rules. Thus, you get a Hillary Clinton getting off, you know, thus you get all of the other corruption that goes on and, and, and politics. They, they slide. Oh, we don't need to deal with that. But if that other group over there did it, we're all over. Them. If it comes to us, we'll work with you. So I can't make sense out of that nonsense. I'm sorry. I, I tried to reason in my head. Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, you've been listening to Kevin at Kevin's Corner. Um, we'll see the backlash of this, but um, it's it's really sad. It's really sad. So uh, my, my heart goes out to the family of Kate Steinle. Um, you know, but really, San Francisco, you know, y'all should y'all need to be apologizing to her family. That's who needs to be apologizing. Anyway, God bless you. Thanks for supporting Kevin's Corner. If you like this video, hit like. Um, share this video and thank you for supporting through donations as well. Um, I've been receiving donations and it is blessing me. It really is. Um, and so if you want to support Kevin's corner, um, there are links in the bottom under the description uh, that will allow you to do that. But God bless you. Maybe the next video I can joke and laugh and stuff. But right now, such a serious situation it's hard to find humor in it because it's sad, you know. Anyway, God bless.